Hello, in this video I want to talk about um, more advanced ways of indexing NumPy arrays and um, yeah, dealing with multidimensional data um, and accessing different parts of it. Alright, so as we've seen before in uh, NumPy arrays, for multidimensional indexing you can use the comma inside the square brackets. And uh, if we use this two-dimensional array here, we can use the comma here to um, separate the indexing between different dimensions. So before the comma, um, we index the first dimension and after that the, se the second one. Now in this case here you can see that we just write a colon um, as the index for the first dimension and this will tell NumPy that it should take all of the values in the first dimension. So the first dimension are these rows and if we say colon it will take all of the rows and then the second dimension we want the second element so it will be this row here. So the second row, uh, the second column um, and all the rows. So this is just an array uh, which corresponds to this column. Um, you also saw already that the start, stop and step syntax still works using colons. Um, this also works in multidimensional cases. So you can just use the one uh, colon three for example here to uh, select two columns from this original array. Um, and yeah, we can also include a step here. So that works as you already know from the Python lists. Um, but one thing that is important to keep in mind here is that using the NumPy indexing, um, you get views as a result. And views um, are special objects in NumPy that um, do not contain new data, but they just show the data from a different array. And um, they actually just show a subset of the data that is stored in memory. And the subset is defined by which indices um, you declare in the square brackets. Um, but make sure that uh, you know that these views do not contain a copy of the original array. Um, so yeah, if you want to assign to the view, for example, it will actually change the original array um, since the view did not create a copy of the data but still points to the same part of memory. Uh, we can show this here by creating this slice of the array, which is again the second column from our two-dimensional array above. And then we set all of the elements in this slice to zero. Uh, we need this uh, square brackets with the colon inside here to tell NumPy to set all the elements. If we left this out, it will just um, set this variable to zero and nothing will uh, change with the array. But with square brackets and colon inside, um, we access all the values and set them to zero. And after that, if we print this um, two-dimensional array again, we see that this uh, column changed and it became zeros. We can of course also do that directly on the array, so we don't have to create this slice first, but we can just set this third column to zero on the array, um, and yeah, this will be reflected in the data. If you don't want this behavior that um, the views point to the same part in memory, you can use the copy function in NumPy, and copy will just um, copy the part of memory that belongs to this array, and um, put it in, uh, to a different position in memory. And um, if you change this copy, the original array will still stay the same. So here we change the seventh column uh, of this copy, set it to zero. Um, and you, as you can see in this original array, nothing changed. But now if we print the copy, this column um, was set to zero. Okay, now coming to the ellipsis object, the ellipsis object is actually an object, a real object in Python, and it can be created using this dot 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 syntax. Um, so if we print this, for example, it will just tell us this is an ellipsis. And um, this ellipsis can be used in NumPy to skip dimensions while indexing. First, we create, um, for this example, a large array, and the stack function um, just concatenates the arrays you um, put in as parameters in a new axis. So here we um, want to concatenate four arrays um, which all have three dimensions um, and they must have the same dimension otherwise this will not work and, and the stack function will throw an error. But if they all have the same uh, dimension it will concatenate them on a new axis that uh, will be appended uh, at the front of the array. So as you can see here this is quite a large array and um, if we look at the shape, 
you can see that this four here um, came from us having four arrays and then the rest, uh, the remaining dimensions are just the dimensions of the array we put in. Now if we want to index this, um, we can still do that using the normal indexing we already know. And um, using these colons you can of course still get all the values from one dimension. And in this example you wouldn't have to include these colons here. Uh, if you left them out, Py uh, NumPy would already know that um, the remaining dimensions should be kept complete. But for example, if you wanted to index this last dimension here as well, you would have to include these middle two um, colons because otherwise NumPy wouldn't know which, um, yeah, which dimension you exactly want to access. And now if you don't want to write all these colons in the middle for multidimensional arrays, you can use this ellipsis object and this will just um, yeah, create a gap and skip everything that's in the, mi in the middle. And the first part um, will start from the front so it will take the first dimensions and um, after the ellipsis it will start from the back and um, use the um, yeah the last dimensions first for indexing um, and of course you can also leave out the first index for um, the first dimensions and just tell numpy to skip until the end and then just uh, index from the end so this will um, give us just the the ones arrays um, with ascending numbers as matrices. Okay, now coming to fancy indexing in NumPy. Um, this is a method where you can uh, very easily and conveniently um, yeah, access different parts of arrays with different um, methods. And the first one I want to cover is using the indices. And um, this means that we can use this array, for example, here and um, just index using the square brackets using the actual indices of this array. So as you know, the index uh, starts at zero, so this 10 would have index zero, then it uh, goes on with one, two, three, and so on. And we can use these indices um, to actually get the elements from this array. And for that, we create this indices array, and we say uh, that the indices should be one, four, and five. And then we can pass this indices array um, in the square brackets to this um, array we defined up here and this will give us the uh, elements at the indices 1, 4 and 5. You can also um, pass multidimensional indices to the square brackets and this will um, mean that it will just reshape the result uh, to have the shape of this index uh, array. So in this case this would be two-dimensional but the indices still work as um, in the one-dimensional case and uh, yeah, the resulting elements are just reshaped. Okay, um, you can also use the indexing um, using indices uh, in different dimensions separately. And for that, uh, we create an, uh, a matrix here. And now we create two new arrays. So first the X indices and the Y and then the Y indices. And um, yeah, these both have two uh, values. So these two are the x indices and these two are the y indices and we will get two uh, values from that. So the first one will be at 3, 1 and the second one will be at 4, 2. So 3, 1 is um, the 16 here because it's the fourth row and um, the second element here. And then the 4, 2 will be this 22 because it's the uh, fifth row and then uh, the third column. Um, and as you know, the indices start counting as zero, so, um, and this is why the four uh, corresponds to the fifth column, or row in this in this case. So yeah, this was correct. We get the 16 and the 22 here, these two elements. Okay, um, now another very convenient function is arcsort, and arcsort um, will return you the indices of an array, but if you use these indices to access the array, you will get the values sorted. Um, so first we create this uh, random integer array. Um, these are just random integers between 0 and 10. And we want 10 of them. And then we create this b, and b is just a squared. And then we use this np.v stack, uh, which stands for vertical stack, and pass a and b. 
And what vertical stack will do is just um, concatenate this array as rows. So um, A and B are just vectors, but V stack will make a matrix out of these vectors and vertically stack these vectors on top of each other. So as you can see here, um, the first row is just our no uh, random integer array um, A, and then the second row is just A squared. Now we can use a.argsort to get the sorted indices um, for the array. And um, yeah, you can use this index array um, to, act, uh, yeah, to index this um, whole array. And by indexing this array with this indices array, you will sort these values. And um, here we again just return the vertical stack of the two arrays, um, but this time we index a and B with the indices. And um, yeah, as you can see, these are now sorted. Okay, now coming to advanced masking. I've already talked about masking in NumPy uh, already, but uh, now I want to go into a little bit of more depth um, of what you can do with masking in Python or in NumPy. Um, yeah, you can, for example, um, use multiple masks together to index uh, one array at the same time. And for that, uh, we first create two masks. Um, we create this mask here, which is um, everything that is smaller or equal to four. And um, yeah, as you know, this will just be a Boolean uh, vector. And then we create another mask, which is everything greater than two. And then we use um, these two masks combined to index our array. And we can combine them in different ways. Um, first, we combine them with an AND. And um, if you want to use an AND with logical, um, for, with masking arrays in NumPy, you have to use the bitwise AND. The normal logical AND um, in Python will not work. So this AND here, this will throw an error because um, this will try to um, yeah, convert the arrays into booleans and then use the logical end on that. But um, that will not work because yeah, converting an array to a boolean is not really defined. So you have to use this bitwise end, which is just uh, one ampersand sign. And if we use this, this will give us a new boolean uh, array where uh, everything is true um, for the elements where greater two is true and smaller or equal four is true. So as I said, uh, using this AND does not work. Um, this is just how NumPy works. And uh, yeah, if we now use this array here, we can index it with these two masks uh, combined with uh, this ampersand. And this just gives us three and four, which are all the values that are greater than two and smaller or equal than four. Okay, so the next way to combine masks is uh, using an OR. And again, we have to use the bitwise OR and not the logical OR in Python. And uh, the bitwise OR is just a pipe character in Python. If we do this, uh, we get all of the values in the array because all of the values are either uh, are greater than two um, or smaller or equal four or both. Uh, if you don't want the or both part, you can use the, bitwise, uh, the XOR. Again, you have to use the bitwise one, um, but this is just the caret uh, sign here. And if we use this caret, um, yeah, then we get every value that is either greater than two or uh, smaller or equals four and not both at the same time. So this is just one, two, five, and six. Then if you want to negate these Boolean arrays, you can use this tilde uh, character. And this will just um, yeah, flip the Boolean values, uh, false to true and true to false. And here um, in this example, we um, yeah, do a more complex concatenation of these uh, masks. And we first create this uh, mask with everything smaller than two, and we XOR that with everything larger than two. And this would be everything that is um, either smaller than two or larger than two. Um, and then we negate this. And uh, yeah, the result of that is just two because um, yeah, array smaller than two, x or array larger than two would be everything but two, 
but if we negate this, we just get two. Okay, uh, we can of course also just use a mask here and negate that. Um, and this will give us the negation of greater than two, which is uh, less than or equal to. So these one and two elements from the array are less than or equal to. Um, yeah, so this is just again um, this negation. And here we can also set um, these values of the mask. Uh, for example, here we set it to two. So everything that is smaller or equal to two uh, will be set to two in this example. Okay, now using these masks is uh, fine, but this will just give you the elements um, of the uh, of this array, or a boolean um, yeah a boolean mask. But if you want to get the indices of where um, this mask is true, you can use the mp.where function, and where will return um, the indices of where a certain array that you pass to the function is true or evaluates to true. Okay, and uh, we first create this array here. Um, which is just a normal A range, and we set everything where modulo 3 is 0 to 0. So every number that is divisible by 3 um, will be set to, uh, to 0 here. Um, then what we want to do is um, get the indices where um, the value is divisible by 3, and um, we create this new array here, which is the same as previously, but now um, yeah, we have the correct values in here for the array range again and then we use the where function and just pass this mask here so we create the mask using the modulo operator and the equals equals again and this will be a boolean mask um, indicating where in the array um, yeah numbers are divisible by three and this where function will return indices and as you can see here it returns a tuple of indices and this tuple is just um, the first dimension um, indices and then afterwards the second dimension of indices. So um, yeah, you can use this first dimension to index the first dimension, then separate it with a comma and use the second uh, array here. And um, yeah, this will just get the elements from the array again using these indices. Um, yeah, and here we create a new array, for example, with the uh, same shape and use the indices from above to set um, these values to zero. And as you can see, again, um, these, this first column was set to zero, which are all the values that are divisible by three in the A range that we defined before. You can also use the where function to um, already assign values to the new array, and um, this will return a copy of the array. So where, um, again, takes this mask, and then you tell it uh, two more values, and this will just uh, replace values where the mask is uh, true by the first one, and everything else will uh, be the second one, and here we pass A, so it will know that it should keep um, the values that were used before, because um, yeah, A is also what we used here in the mask. And um, as you can see, A was not changed by uh, using this where with the assignment, um, so we uh, created a copy of A and assigned to that and did not change A itself. Okay, um, now we also have the function argware and argware fun uh, works basically just as um, just as where, but it returns the indices in a different format. Um, and here we, as an example, we create an array which is um, using this i function the i function is just a simple way to create an identity matrix and uh, the parameter 4 here says that the identity matrix we want to create um, has four rows and four columns and we multiplied that with uh, this a range. So yeah, we have this um, diagonal 1 which we multiplied with the a range and of course this will become 0 because um, yeah, in the a range this was 0 and the one from the i matrix was multiplied with zero here. And if we um, use the argware on A, um, we get this uh, two-dimensional array, which are, again, the indices of where this matrix evaluates the true. And um, as I said before, um, Python evaluates uh, numbers to true if they're not zero. And 
the numbers that are not zero in this array are 5, 10, and 15 here uh, on this diagonal. And um, the arcware will tell us the indices um, of these non-zero values in the array, but grouped as uh, like basically coordinates. So this first row here, um, 1, 1, is just the index of this. So the coordinates basically of this 5, uh, which is 1 here, 1 here. So second row, second column. And the second one is 2, 2, this 10, and the 3, 3 is this 15. Um, and on the other hand, where just returns um, multiple arrays of uh, the indices for different dimensions.